How's it going everybody? In this video for our CCMP Route 300-101 exam, we're going to be taking a look at the high level overview of Frame Relay and taking a look at its operations, the point to point capability and its multi point capability. And then uh, I'm going to, there's not a ton that I think we need to cover here and having taken the, taken the test myself, um, I'm going to start off just a, a real quick high level overview then I'm going to start diving right into what Frame Relay really is and then we'll get into the details of how it actually works and go from there and then go on to some of the details that are out there. I'm actually going to be showing you some of the notes that I had from when I was studying for the CCIE in the version 4 format. And this is probably about 18 months ago before I passed my written exam. The, uh, the whole point of Frame Relay is it's a layer 2 uh, protocol that uh, layer two encapsulation, I should say, that allows you to uh, use a service provider to c join your uh, all of your sites together, whether it's hub to spoke or spoke to hub or spoke to spoke or hub to hub, depending on the situation. Uh, but basically, what we're going to be taking a look at is just a high level overview of what Frame Relay is. I'll go through some of the very basic configuration options that are out there for it and some of the um, Configuration stuff that you'd have to take into uh, take into mind. I'll take a look at a frame, a couple of the frame relay routers. Make sure that you understand the the purpose and uh, process behind why I have things configured the way that I do, and go from there. So shouldn't be a ton of detail, but we'll take a look at some of the reasons why we have things the way that we do. So we'll take a look at the operations. We'll look at point to point and the multi point and how that uh, how those are affected. So frame relay. Um, in order to understand it, well, I'm going to take a quick uh, left-hand turn onto broadcast medias, and so we can uh, see a, a compare and contrast between the two, because I think that will help people understand what's going on between them. So, for broadcast medias, you had Ethernet, Token Ring, and FIDI. Um, I don't remember what fi Fiber Distributed Something Infrastructure, I believe, is what it stood for, and uh, these guys were. Um, native broadcast support so you could source uh, can address all connected destinations simultaneously is basically what a broadcast means so it simplifies layer 3 to layer 2 resolution very 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 straightforward um, now with your NBMA or non-broadcast multi-access that those are things like frame relay ISDN ATM there's no native broadcast support so basically what that means is if you need to reach out and talk to somebody you need to have a mapping from layer three to layer two. The other thing too is like uh, if you had a, they have a thing called war dial, and war dial is simply um, if you have a pool of destination phone numbers that you want to call from a source number, you could pick up the phone, dial the number, and it's going to randomly dial these numbers. And basically, what not what broadcast means is it wasn't possible to uh, phone every uh, call every phone number in the ISDN cloud and have them connected at all at the same time. So where a broadcast, if you were to go into a router and type in ping all 255s and all four octets, then anything that's associated on any interface, if there's an, somebody listening, it's going to get a response in from everybody. That's what they call a broadcast ping. Now, you can't do that in, in, in broadcast environments. So basically what ends up happening here is if you have a situation where you have a non-broadcast media like Frame Relay you, uh, which inherently doesn't support it and you need to uh, have broadcast or a multicast capability over that um, you would have to append at the very end of the, the syntax the broadcast keyword and I'll show you where, where that looks like but basically all you're doing is, is you are using what they call replicated unicast and you're sending that over the wire and it's sending it as layer two replicated unicast. So your broadcast is actually a uh, replicated unicast going across the wire. So it appears as it's coming across as a broadcast. So that's how you're able to run your dynamic routing protocols like RIP and EIGRP and BGP and OSPF over frame relay and they work. So that's why um, that's why that happens. Now this also implies you need a layer three to layer two resolution, which means you're gonna have to map an um, IP address to a DELSI or a data link connection and identifier. Now, there's some similarities when we get into DMVPN, 
with the next top resolution protocol, where you have to map an MBMA to a VPN address. We'll talk about that more in detail later, but this, the theory is still the same, except for you're not trying to map layer 3 to layer 2, you're mapping layer 3 to layer 3. But it's layer 3 private to layer 3 public, and you're trying to map them together so that your DMVPN cloud can receive traffic in, and it could uh, receive traffic off of its physical uh, WAN interface and still receive the traffic in on the VPN. We'll take a look at that more in detail later, but that's the general idea. So within IPv4 Ethernet, you would send out a broadcast request for this IP address, and then we return a MAC address, a unicast reply of this. So this guy would send out a, an all F's MAC address request, and he would receive a unicast back in. So pretty indicative of, 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 of Ethernet, right? Well. If we get into the uh, the multi uh, the multi point interfaces and things like that, you can uh, especially with uh, point to point type circuits. If you have issues with connectivity on those, so let's say for instance you have um, a point to point circuit. So if you're dealing with a single connection between two different routers, and what's going to end up happening is the routers are going to detect that and automatically they're going to associate that to a um, a point to point connection because they can only see one other person on that connection. Now, Frame Relay allowed, it, allowed you to scale that either on a um, point to point basis or on a multi point basis. So, if you're going to do a multi point interface, then you need to have multiple Dell C mappings are possible. What this means is if you're going to configure it, you'd have to type in Frame Relay map the IP address and then to the Dell C. So, if I wanted to map 10.1.1.1 to Dell C. 101, I could do that, and then 10.101, uh, 10.1.1.2 to Dell C 102, and so on and so forth. Now, the with even with the mapping set, if you did not append the broadcast command at the end of that syntax that I just said you told you, frame relay map the address to the Dell C. If you didn't append broadcast, the only way you'd be able to form a neighbor relationship over that link on both ends would be via unicast neighbor adjacency. And I specify neighbor because EIGRP and OSPF support the neighbor command as a unicast capability. So as we go along here, you'll find out very quickly that uh, when you're dealing with it, that um, it's not c super complicated, but it's difficult enough sometimes. So multiple Dell C mappings, like I, like I said, are possible. Requires layer three to IP, uh, layer three IP to Dell C mapping. And you can term uh, can terminate multiple layer two circuits, which is nice. Which is the nice thing about that. So typically on the head end, you're going to have that as a physical interface, and then all of the sub inter all the um, spoke sites are going to be sub interfaces, because then you can scale it. Um, now when we get into point to point, a little bit different. You can only terminate one layer two circuit. Now that's this is assuming you only have one other neighbor on your on your connection. Or like a slash 30, or if you're special and you want to, you know, really push the envelope, slash 31, which is only two addresses. Um, nice thing about this one is it doesn't require layer three to layer two addresses. It's one circuit, so there's only two possible addresses. Now the nice thing about this is there's some actual point-to-point -point connections, so you can do a frame relay point-to-point -point, um, sub-interface, or you could go in there and let's say, for instance, you've got a situation where you're doing multi-point. Okay, you're doing multi-point, and you want to make sure that the other side, uh, you can get to the other two spokes. So you would have to you would have to te you would have to specify a mapping. You have to map an IP to a Delsi. Okay, when you're dealing with point-to-point, -point, you can type in frame relay interface Delsi, and then the Delsi number to get to the next hop. So it's only going to have to receive one Delsi in, and that's all it's going to have to worry about. And that's the benefit to that because of the fact that it gets rid of all the complexities of multi-point deployment. So as we go along here, I'm going to go with some of the uh, some of the commands and some of the details that are out there, just so you guys are familiar with this stuff. And this is pretty much going to be as far as we take it for frame relay, just because the fact of there's not a ton left to worry about. In MBMA, address resolution issues impl are implied. So um, what's going to end up happening here? You know, I'm going to go over this and I'll start backfilling information as I go in. Uh, layer two addressing it's a Delsi or data link connection identifier. Uh, and this number is only locally significant on a per interface basis. So you can have that same Delsi on two different interfaces as long as it's on two different interfaces. 
and it'll work. Now, uh, some of the uh, technical terms, we have DTE and DCE, data terminal equipment and data clocking equipment. The difference between these two is this is the client, this is the, the ISP. Because the client, uh, the, the ISP is the one setting the clocking. So the clocking is going to be how many seconds, or how, or how many how many bits per second is going to forward out. Now, the one thing that most people have a hard time understanding is the way that the forwarding engine works on just about every interface, at least that I've seen, is it's not a consistent throw. Um, it's not one gigabit per second. So it's not one billion bits per second. So it is, but it's not broken up just in it's not one fell swoop. It doesn't just build up a billion bits into its queue and just forward them out. There's this thing called a shaper. And basically what this does, the shaper, there's um, I call it a shaper simply for the fact that it dictates how how often and how much data is sent in a per uh, per interval. Now let's assume that the interface sends that is a one second interval and the interval sends traffic every 100 milliseconds. So there's 10, 10 100 millisecond intervals to send in order for it to achieve its 1 billion bits. And I use 1 billion because then I could use 100 meg per, per shot. So what this interface is going to do is it's going to take this, this 1 billion bits that it's going to be bringing in and for every 100 milliseconds it's going to serialize 100, mi 100 million bits from the hardware queue to the physical uh, wire and out the, out the door is going to go. This is done every 100 milliseconds. So the next 100 milliseconds, another 100 meg is shot out. And so by the time you get to your fifth uh, interval, you sent out 500 megabits in that half second period of time. So by the time it gets to the other, the other end of that second, so those last 500 milliseconds, it's built up and sent out 1 billion bits but it sent them in 10 equal intervals. Okay, so that's that's the idea of the clocking. So every so many seconds, it's going to send traffic out. The clocking is going to be per second in a certain amount of bits in that time frame. So when you're when you're forwarding traffic out, if you have set it for 1.5 meg, that means over that one point that one second period of time, that interface is able to forward out 1.544 million bits in that one second period of time. So let's say, again, if it sends out in 10 equal intervals, it's going to send out, um, let's say, 154,000. Just, just a random number I'm pulling. I don't know if that's exactly 10 uh, 10% of 1.5 meg. but um, So it's going to send out that much data per, per interval. And that's how it's going to forward. Now, the clocking is, it doesn't get that specific, but that's the general idea for it. So in case you were wondering how traffic shaping works, that's how traffic shaping works. Now, the nice thing about this is it also, LMI or local management interface, it is what reports the virtual cir uh, circuit st uh, status. It's automatically detected and by default on Cisco box it's going to be Cisco. You have the ANSI which is I believe is open standard and Q933A. I've never seen that one before but you know uh, it's certainly possible to be used. Uh, if you want to verify it, show frame relay M uh, LMI, and that's how you would do that. Now, just to give you guys an, an idea of the interface status, if you see up up is layer one and layer two up and running, which means the physical interface is not shut down, is is shut down or is no shut, and layer two both ends agree on the encapsulation. So whether it's PPP, frame relay, Ethernet, whatever, or I should say ARPA if you're dealing with Ethernet, uh, doesn't matter. If it's up down, you have something wrong with LMI, which is typically going to be either an encapsulation issue or it's going to be some sort of signaling. Now LMI advertises VC status, uh, which is virtual circuit, and if you look, it's going to tell you show frame relay PPC. It's going to let you know what's going on. There's four statuses that you can see. It's going to be active, which is good between local router and the frame switch. You have inactive, which means the number is right and there's uh, there's an issue somewhere. Either it's a port shut down, the encapsulation is wrong, clocking is mismatched, or something like that. Um, actually, I should say clocking is not set or something to that effect. Deleted, 
means that the number uh, on the interface is different than the frame switch. So they don't agree on what's going on. And then static means LMI is disabled and back to back frame relay. And you can do that. You can actually turn no frame LMI and you can go in there and you can spe specifically set what you want to have. And um, this is typically indicative if you want to. Um, not too long ago, I actually tested uh, using frame relay as the PE to CE protocol. Uh, or I'm sure I'm sorry layer 2 connectivity and then I used MPLS in the back end so it would hand off and I had to do a fr frame relay to frame relay connectivity and I had to disable frame uh, uh, LMI so for frame relay ARP it's actually referred to as inverse ARP so basically what ends up happening is with um, it doesn't work the same way that um, how can I put this it doesn't work the same way as Ethernet does so if you have a layer 3 to layer 2 address, uh, what DLC do I do I use to reach IP address of whatever? So resolution occurs dynamically through inverse ARP or statically through frame relay map. So if you type in no frame relay inverse ARP, you're going to have to statically set your frame relay mappings. By default, inverse ARP is on and you're going to be dynamically learning your information. Now to verify your, resolu your resolution, you have show frame relay map or show ARP in, in Ethernet. Now the way that this works is actually pretty straightforward. Enabled automatically when supported protocol is configured, which we already talked about. Um, so IP address, whatever. Requests are sent out all circuits assigned to the interface for all. And basically what it does is it says, okay, I need to know all of the DELCs that are out there and the IP addresses that you've g that, that, is, that those guys have learned. Once it receives that information in, then it, map it does an automatic mapping. It'll even say dynamic. So you know. And then you can go in there and you can override that by typing in, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I completely lost my train of thought. You can uh, statically configure that with the uh, the frame relay map command. So um, you can stop it from asking, but not stop it from receiving. And so. Uh, basically what this means is you can type in frame, no frame relay inverse ARP for EIGRP 101 or no frame relay inverse ARP so it automatically includes broadcast support and um, so you can do a static frame relay mapping if you need to and manually bind layer 2 to layer 3 remote IP address so in order to get to this address use this local DELSI same logic as a static ARP entry so again static mapping is override dynamic mappings and our inverse ARP disabled when static mappings are configured so, like I said, it automatically does it by itself, and um, I don't really think I need to go into any more detail beyond that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to our configuration, and we're going to take a look at exactly how this works. So as you can see, I still have my PPPoE stuff set up. We're going to take a look at that in more detail. or uh, We're pretty much done with PPPoE. I'll remove that later on. But I'm going to go to router 5 here, and as you can see, I have my configuration set up here. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to jump out of here, I'm going to do a show run interface serial 2 slash 1. And I have encapsulation frame relay on this interface. Now if I do a show frame map, I have two mappings. Both learned them on this interface for 100.0.0.16 and 100.0.0.17 for DLC 5.16 and 5.17 dynamically. And their uh, broadcast is automatically enabled. Their status is defined, and they're active. Which all, all this great talk means what? Ping 100.0.0.16. I can ping the remote end. That's exactly what that means. Now I can go in here and map these directly. Now inverse ARP uh, learn these in, so I can go to global config interface serial two slash one and type in no frame relay, and then if you go down. Right here it says inverse ARP. Enable, disable, frame relay, inverse ARP. We're going to say inverse ARP. And you could do it for um, more specific information. So I think you can do IP. Uh, you can do it per per DELC if you wanted to. But we're going to oh, no frame no frame relay, inverse ARP. All right, so that's going to turn it off. Now what I have to do is I have to physically map these statements. So I'm going to type in frame frame relay map I have to map an IP of 100.0.0.16 to a DELC of 516 
and if I want to enable uh, broadcast should be forwarded to this address if I want to enable a, a dynamic routing protocol I need to enable the broadcast command at the end and then I need to hit enter we we'll do the same thing for 17 and 517 now what happens if I do 16 it's gonna say address already in map so now I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna do 517 and there we go I'm gonna jump out of here do a show frame map and now you can see that they're statically configured static it's broadcast Cisco is the information so if we come up here it's a little bit different than we saw the first time now we have broadcast static defined active now we're physically uh, mapping what we have so if we do that ping again still get across and we can still go across okay pretty straightforward stuff now I'm gonna go to 16 and do the same thing I'm gonna go to global config the interface serial 1 slash 0 I'll type in no frame inverse ARP I'll type in frame map of 100.0.0.5 Five is going to be a Delsi of uh, what did I use? I forgot. Do show frame map uh, 165 and 167. So we're going to say uh, frame map of 100.0.0.5 with a Delsi of 165 and broadcast. Um, oh, I'm sorry, map IP and we're going to say 17 and it would be 167 and now they're statically defined now I'm going to do this and then what I'm going to do on because um, this is the OSPF configuration side this is the EIGRP I'm going to go to 17 and pretty much repeat this process and then what I'm going to do is on the other side I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to not use broadcast, and we're going to use a unicast connect uh, use unicast connectivity, and I'm going to show you what that's going to how that's going to affect us as we move forward into other th and other topics, and I'm going to write down that I did that so that I'm not like banging my head against the wall when it doesn't want to work later on. So interface serial one slash zero. Um, I'm going to type in no frame uh, inverse ARP frame and do show frame. I'm going to type in frame relay map IP of 100.0.0.5 to a Delsi of 175 and 16 is to 176 and do and hit that up arrow again do show frame relay now there's stack or static and do ping 100.0.0.5 and 16. Now you might be asking yourself, and I'm glad you did, how does it know? Well if we click on 14 here, we type in show frame route, I had to come in here and manually define these. So what I said is on serial 1 star 0, so 14 pointing towards 5, you have to type in the Delsi that you're coming from, the outgoing interface, and the Delsi you want it to reach on. So we're going to type in show, show run interface serial 1 slash 0 this is the configuration you have to do you have to tell it it's going to be encapsulation frame relay set the clock rate the interface type is going to be DCE so it'll send the clocking and then you need to type in frame relay route 516 to interface uh, serial 1 slash 1 165 and repeat the process over and over again over and over again and 1 slash 1 so you have to map it to the correct interfaces and then 1 slash 2 so pretty straightforward at the, at the most part so we go back to five. We type in do ping. Or I'm sorry, ping 255.255.255.255. We should get responses from four, three, six, thirteen, and sixteen and seventeen. And I bet you any money. Let me break out of that real quick. Go to global config. No IP domain dash lookup hit that up here again there we go that's a little better so we're receiving a lot of ping a lot of responses from a lot of people 
but the important part is we're receiving responses in from the addresses that we needed to. So we're going to do the same thing over on uh, 9, 18, and ni uh, 19. So we'll go to 9. I'm going to go to global config and interface serial 2 slash 0. I'm going to type in no frame inverse ARP. Uh, do show frame map. And I'm going to type in frame relay map IP uh, 101.0.0.18 to a del C of 918, but I'm going to leave off the broadcast command, which is going to allow, and if I type in do show frame map, notice how it says, it doesn't say broadcast. We'll do the same thing on for uh, 19, 919. I don't have the, uh, the, st the broadcast command like I did over here on 5. So if I do a show frame map, Broadcast is enabled here on 9. There is no broadcast enabled, which means that I will have no choice but to use the unicast configuration capability. So I'll have to use the neighbor statement with, uh, with EIGRP. I can go back in there and flip it over later if I wanted to, but at the end of the day, it's going to be allow, it's just going to allow me unicast connect connectivity over the wire. So I'm going to go to 18 and just pretty much do the exact same thing. I'm going to type in show uh, frame map. I'm going to go to global config and uh, interface serial 1 slash 0, no frame inverse ARP, frame map IP 101.0.0.19 to 89, and then same thing to 9 to 189. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Same thing over here at 19, global config, interface serial. 1 slash 0, no frame inverse ARP, and frame map, actually do show frame map, and we're going to say uh, for uh, frame relay map IP 101.0.0.18 is going to be to 98, and we're going to say uh, into 9 is going to be uh, what is that 199 and enter so there we go that's all there really is to it so I've gotten all the frame really configured we need to and we'll go from there so just be aware and now there's a question what about the point-to-point -point configuration well point to point this is all multi-point as I've shown you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the connection between 7 and 13 real quick I'm gonna go I'm gonna hit enter here I'm going to go to global config, type in uh, do show run section line. I thought I had. guess I hadn't taken care of that. So line console zero, no exec dash timeout, and do write. Okay, there it is. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in interface serial 2 slash 2. I'm going to type in encapsulation frame relay, right? I'm going to hit enter. It's going to bring the circuit down. I'm going to go to 13, and I'm going to type in config T, and um, interface serial 1 slash 1. Encapsulation is frame relay. Okay, now it's trying to look for a frame switch in between them, but there is none. So if I type in no frame relay, and I go down towards the end here, and I type in LMI type, LMI type, and I hit enter, that's going to disable this. So it'll be back to back frame relay. And go to 7, and type in no frame relay, uh, LMI type, and that should bring the circuit back up. And I need to type in um, do show interface serial 2 slash 2.
Let's see here. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Incomplete command LMI type is Cisco. And let's go to 37 the same thing. But there's no frame switch in between them. And Okay, so I just checked some documentation. It's actually no keep alive. And hit enter. And same thing on 13. And no keep alive. I apologize about that. And then we type in interface. Uh, interface. Uh, frame relay. Interface Delsi. Interface Delsi is going to be, we're going to say is 137. And we're going to hit enter. I think that's all we have to do at the end. And we're going to say hit enter and we're going to go to 7 and type in frame relay interface delsi is going to be 713 and hit enter and I think that's all we have to worry about. I don't think they have to match as far as I'm aware and let's I th some of these additional commands are are here but we're not going to have to worry about those so let's get up a do ping 137.0.0.2 let's see here do show IP interface brief okay it's up up let's see here let's go to seven. Oh, did I type did I ping myself I did dot one interesting why is this not oh I know why I'm I got gotcha. you okay so I actually I goofed up a little bit so that's my fault so actually we need to type in here is um, I need to type in do show it's actually interface serial two slash two is encapsulation frame relay. Do show run interface serial two slash two. No IP address. Actually, all this stuff right here we have in here, we had to pull this off and put this on. We had to create a sub interface because it's a point to point. So no IP address. We have to type, and we're gonna uh, configure a slash thirty two mask or slash thirty twenty eight mask. So I'll type in no frame relay interface delsi. All that good stuff is under here, and no. Um, no, f no, this, no, and none of this. I forgot about that. And then we're type in, exit out of here and type interface serial 2 slash 2 dot uh, 137. And it's going to be a uh, point to point. Hit enter. And we're going to type in IP address. Actually, we can just do this. Grab this guy right here and do this. Hit this and then do. And then do this. And actually, let's, let's exit that and do this. And then. Um, actually, I don't have to type that command. That wasn't even needed. So do show run interface serial 2 slash 2 dot 137. And that's all we need to do there. So now we're going to go on to the other side to router 13. And we're going to type in uh, exit out of here and exit out of here and type in do show run interface serial 2 slash 1. 1 slash 1, sorry. So we have all that configuration there. We're going to type in interface serial 1 slash 1, no IP address. No frame this guy, and no here, and nothing on this one. And we're going to type interface serial 1 slash 1 dot uh, 137, and it's point to point. 
or type in I in the IP address, plug that back in, and the frame relay interface Delsi. And now if we type in if we exit out here and type in do show IP interface brief and type in do ping uh, 137.0.0.2 I wonder if it's just because of the fact that I have the different Delsi configured if the Delsi be sh should be locally configured locally sp specific let's see here um, It says frame relay map statements can be configured on the main interface if point to point sub are not desired. As long as frame map statements are correct and the matching Delsies. Oh, okay, that might be the problem. So we're going to go to. We did a. We're going to use frame relay Delsi 713 then. Do show run interface. Interface serial one, uh, 2 slash 2. I'm sorry. 1 slash 1 dot 137 so that should fix that so do ping 1 um, 137.0.0.2 .0 there we go that was the problem the Delsies were wrong and so that fixes that problem so now I'm gonna do a do right real quick on this guy make sure that we're good there and on 7 and do right because this will give us something else to play with. And I want to just uh, run through a quick config of that so you guys can see how that would be put together. And that pretty much sums up what we have to do And uh, for that. Um, that's pretty much it for Layer 2. We're going to get into Layer 3 coming up in the next video and go into all the details of how that, was, that type of stuff would work. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.